I mean, it's five months of our work in compressed into two hours and eight minutes. But the film very carefully tracks what we did, how we did it, and really captures the personalities involved, particularly here at, at the newspaper. For those of us who are portrayed in the film, I mean, we we're all so accustomed to be the ones asking the questions that it's been a little unsettling, certainly at first, uh, to be on the receiving end of questions, but it's always good to remind ourselves, well, that's what we do. The numbers clearly indicate that there were senior clergy involved. That's all they do, indicate. Are you telling me that, that if we run a story with 50 pedophile priests in Boston... Mike. They were very subtle. Um, in fact, I didn't even realize the degree to which we had been studied until I saw the movie itself, and suddenly friends and family members were saying, you know, that you're, she's doing what you do. Those little mannerisms and, you know, just sort of the, you know, things like I sometimes put my hand on my chin or sometimes when my hair falls on my face, I throw my head back and she was doing those things. So I then realized that all the time I was with her that I thought had been social, dinner, a walk, I was being studied and observed, you know. Michael Keaton has said that sometimes he would ask Robbie questions and he had absolutely no interest in the answer. He just wanted to see how Robbie would respond. <laughs> We had no idea. I asked people what they thought of the movie and how, how uh, well Mark Ruffalo captured me, and they all unanimously assured me that uh, Ruffalo uh, nailed me and, uh, and did capture that part of me. I get a little worked up about things, I guess. <laughs> it's time, Robbie! It's time! They knew, and they let it happen to kids, okay? It could have been you. It could have been me. It could have been any of us. I remember when I was at the East Boston Community News, I did this interview, and I knew this was going to be a great story, big story. And so I remember that I was, I walked out of this guy's office, and it was snowing. And I remember I ran all the way back to the office to start writing a story, even though it was a weekly paper. <laughs> I am a runner, on the other hand. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I run a marathon every year, and I, I'm in a running club and all that stuff. So. They also call it a leisure activity. You ought to try it, Mike. I do. I run. Yeah. You run to work. <laughs> I mean, I don't run to work, but, but I do run pretty much every morning. The first time we saw it was in a private screening room. They showed it to us sort of shortly before they could make any last changes, so they wanted to make sure they didn't get anything wrong. And it was just surreal. I think all of us couldn't really appreciate the story because we were just trying to get over the weirdness of seeing ourselves depicted. You know, doing this story was hard. And uh, uh, that period of my life was not all a bowl of cherries. I mean, uh, uh, hearing uh, the stories of the survivors, uh, the, uh, the sadness of those stories, hearing how their lives had been destroyed, there were just so many emotions that were evoked seeing it the first time. And I feel badly, in a way, for Tom McCarthy, the director, and Josh Singer, the screenwriter, because they came to show us their work, and they had a great deal of enthusiasm about it. And uh, they've told me that they imagined we would have a wonderful conversation and they would get all our reactions. And I think all of us were stunned into silence, pretty much. I think part of what shocked us is just how uh, authentic and accurate uh, it was, in, in, or it is, in so many ways. I think we were just stunned by how, how good it is.